All right, so the data we've looked at so far um, is either linear or proportional, um, but those values that we have for those uh, data points are singular. There's only one number associated with them. But what if we have data that's more complicated? Um, often, you know, we'll look at a data set and we'll see that for each listing, it might have a variety of values. What if we want to know how those two things are correlated with each other? Um, so I found one of my favorite data sets, and this is actually um, kind of a popular thing to use in data visualization. This is the ice cream data set. So this was collected um, between 1951 and 1953. Also kind of fun. Um, this is one of the sources I found for this, and it was the best at describing the process of recording the data and what the format is in. It's actually a little hard to figure out from some of the sources. And um, to display this, I'm using a scatter plot. And a scatter plot allows us to create um, data that is uh, plotted on two axes. Um, uh, the single data point goes on these two axes. So instead of having time and a number or something like that, um, in this case, the ice cream data set gives us temperature in Fahrenheit and pints of ice cream consumed per person. Um, and so we can see it plotted here. And so, so for an individual data point, um, for example, I can see it's 61 degrees and that um, per, per person, it's about uh, 0.3 or a third of a pint of ice cream. Um, which I, don't know, I think is really fun. So again, I found the data and cleaned it up a little bit for you if you wanna play with this. Um, this also includes price per pint of ice cream. Keep in mind, this is the 50s, so these prices are really cheap. Um, but you could also experiment with um, different uh, combinations of these three values to see what happens. So I load it up and um, you'll notice I have no label uh, list here. And that's because um, we are, creating an X and a Y position for each data point. There's no labels associated with this. Uh, so I'm grabbing the two variables that I want. In this case, I'm getting the pints consumed and the temperature. And then when we want to add this to our data, we need to do it in a slightly different format. Instead of just adding it to that list, I'm creating what's called in JavaScript an object. And we've seen objects before. All of these options are in that same way, where we have a label, colon, and then a value associated with it. So for this particular point, um, yeah, I want my pint to be in the x direction and the temperature to be in the y direction. You could totally flip these and experiment with what's more readable. And then I'm adding that point to my data. From there, it's really, again, pretty straightforward. I'm telling it to do a scatter plot. We'll talk about the trend line in a second. Um, and then I'm just making sure that they're labeled. One other thing that I wanted to add here, and let me show you what this looks like without it is uh, setting the ticks for the temperature. So right now, a couple of things happen that I'm not super pumped about. One is that it starts at 20 degrees, which is okay, uh, but it goes up to 80, but we then see this trend line, which we'll talk about in a sec, goes off the top of the screen. Not ideal. Plus we know there must be temperature you know, above 80. It doesn't seem very intuitive. So we can instead for each axis, set the ticks and there's a number of things that we can um, change here but I'm changing the minimum value and the maximum value and this is going to sort of expand my chart to fill that um, so it doesn't change my data but it changes the overall range of the presentation so now my um, temperature starts at zero and it goes up to 100 and I just think it kind of like contains this a little bit better to me it's a little more readable it's not so squished Again, this is something you could play with and experiment with. If you look at the documentation, you'll see examples of this as well. Um, the scatter chart doesn't have a ton of options um, that um, we haven't you know, seen before. It says here, um, some of this stuff is in line chart format, so you can specify some of those kinds of things like the points and all of that. Um, so there's one more addition here, and that's this blue line, and that's called a trend line. So a scatter plot, without this looks like this. And sometimes it's easy to read and sometimes it's not. So once you get used to this, maybe you could start identifying this kind of linear trend this way, um, but it's not, you know, that's not always the case. And a trend line is a mathematical uh, sort of statistical analysis that looks for a line that fits the data and um, helps us kind of see patterns or trends in that data. Um, Chart.js does not do this out of the box, 
But one of the cool things uh, about this library is that it's got a great community of people building additional tools. And so this is the, the plugin called Trendline. Um, it's really great and it's very easy to use. We just have to do um, one, one thing and that's we have to add it to our sketch. So I downloaded it and then I went to the index page and here we load D3 and chart.js uh, but we also need to load this Trendline plugin. Um, the order matters here, I found. So we need to first load chart.js so it has a context for it, but we want to load the trend line before our sketch. Otherwise, we may be trying to create this trend line um, before the code exists to be able to do that. And then um, we just include this with our data. So this is in the same place that we would specify fill colors and um, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we just say trend line linear. And then we can, um, unfortunately, the the wording here is a little different than the rest of chart.js. Um, style refers to the color, so I'm doing a semi-transparent blue. Width is the thickness of the line, and the line style can be either dotted or solid, which is going to just depend on kind of what you want to do with your visualization. Um, but that's it, scatter chart. It's pretty easy. Um, you'll, again, definitely want to play with the uh, format. Actually, we can take a little, we can look at this here. Let's see what happens. If um, we do temperature instead, and this will be pints. So I'm just flipping the axes. Oh, no, that's getting all screwed up. Okay, I'm going off script here. <laughs> but you could definitely flip that around. I think there's probably some funkiness going on with my labels and stuff like that. Um, but it should give you some ideas of ways that you could kind of experiment with this. Um, and again, there's an additional um, value in here in this data set that you could also experiment with and see if this works. So if you have complex data that maybe you want to see correlation between things, um, you may not find anything there, but it can be a really interesting way of exploring and more complex or like interconnected data.